so my my two cents on the presidential debate last night um, it bothered me it really did it really bothered me in a sense of this is where the, some people want our country to go and, and it bothered me as a person that was worked for everything that they ever wanted uh, was brought up by amazing truly amazing parents that would do anything for me but they instilled big values you know and I think our country is is founded on those values and that's what it it is to to be part of the United States and it it played into more of a video I watched on YouTube when I can't sleep I tend to go to YouTube and I just randomly I just click and click and clicking and you always come across you know something and you're like oh, let me see what this is and it was with actually President Obama he was doing one of his debates or his rallies or something and he had a heckler in the audience and the, the heckler was complaining about immigration or something uh, it escapes me now and security guards went up to him and asked him to, to leave and everything and and Obama stopped him and I thought that was just so respectful and he had so much poise doing it and I, I personally think it's respectful because he, he realized that his values are are the values that our president should look to that when we have an issue in our government or our country or our state or our city or our home that the, the president will look out for us and, and protect us. And it's not that he stopped them. He educated him. And that was my biggest thing. And it, it, it almost was an eye-opener to me. So he says, you know, I hear you. I, you know, and, and if I can just wave a magic wand or scream and holler and, and get things passed, a lot of people would be happy. A lot of issues that we face in this country would be rectified, and we we would make a stronger world, per se, in in that person's perspective or point of view or the issue that they're facing. He says, "But I choose the harder path," and he says, "I choose the harder path because the United States is built upon, you know, passing laws correctly, going through legislation, going through government, everybody voting for it, and." we're not in a dictatorship where I say this goes and that's it so you, the harder path you might not like but this is what we're founded upon and I'm going to get your issues faced or or hopefully our next president will get your issues faced is it going to be in the time that you want it probably not everybody loves instant gratification to be honest you know uh, but it's still heard and it's still going to be voiced and it's still going to be see if we could pass it and see if we could do it as the President of the United States. And that was amazing to me. And that was truly amazing. Because when you look at, say, Trump's rallies and stuff, that he has discrimination, racism, and he has the most fights and protests and, and, and issues that go on in his rallies where he's promoting violence and hate and it baffles me how there's people that are out there that still want him to be our president. You know, I I don't I don't fault Trump though in this aspect. You know, when you're born with a silver spoon and you can borrow 14 million dollars to start your first business when you're a teenager going into adulthood, 14 million dollars that can that could do so much for so many people but when you don't have to sit there and and clean and, or, 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 or do the grunt work or, or build up to a, a big position in your company and work hard for it and work long hours and it's just given to you you don't really understand the course of action and, and tend to always think money's the answer for it or 
I can run before I even know how to crawl. And and I, it's not to say that anybody, if anybody doesn't know me, that I'm not like that. I, I have that mentality in the sense of, I always want to get to that finish line. No matter which way I could do it, I'm going to fight for it, I'm going to get there. But it's, it's a, lessons that I've learned from my childhood, that my parents instilled for me that, hey, you want to go out and stuff, you know, you got to clean, stock a shelf, do something, you know, show the value of money in that case. And, and realize that there's multiple different things you have to go through to get to that end goal. Now, a lot of the things that a lot of his point of views on those things, is it valid in a sense? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I guess in a sense that if if it was that easy to to fix something, yeah. You know, uh, on Hillary's standpoint, is does she have issues? Yeah. Is is um, does everybody have issues? Yeah. But she she's similar to Barack in the sense of she'll pick the harder path because it's. It's the path that we're founded upon. You know, to sit there and say you're gonna export 800 million, you know, illegal immigrants or whatever the case may be, or whatever the number is, you know, those illegal immigrants are not the ones that are doing uh, mass murders and, and, and killing our economy and stuff like that. You know, our economy is, has never been higher. Our unemployment rate is the lowest it's ever been. Gas is two dollars a gallon. Like, come on. And you're gonna look to them? Trust me, they just want freedom. They just want to live in a country that they do. And to be honest, I doubt they're going for the job that you're going for. Okay? And that's not to be racist, that's not to be biased, it's not to be anything. That there is jobs out there that are typically given to the minority or group groups because no one else wants them. And it, if we exported it, you know, it would cost millions upon millions of our dollars to export these immigrants. Uh, it would cost millions upon millions of dollars just to build a freaking wall, uh, per se. Uh, and it would, jobs would be out there, but jobs that no one would want to take. And our, <laughs> our economy would go to an all-time low. And it's just, it, it just baffles me on how there's such close-minded people still out there in the world when the United States was built upon diversity. You have these, these I call them red states, that are, are uh, maybe not the most educated, maybe not the most, uh, yeah, educated. <laughs> educated in the sense that uh, they, they don't know what's outside their, their four walls. And uh, they'll just vote for him because it's something different. You know, I had an argument with one of my coworkers because she was so pro-Trump, so pro-Trump. And I says, you know, I get where you're coming from. Because a lot of the issues that he wants to quote-unquote rectify is not at your doorstep. You know, if you were, say, someone of Muslim background, and, and granted, there's a lot, been a lot of issues with Muslims, and but it's not all of them. You can't sit there and take a grouping of people and say all of you are bad. Hatred isn't, you know, genetically passed down. Hatred, bigotry, stupidity, that's the learn. That's something that, that is learned from when you grew up, from what you see in your day-to-day -day basis, from the people you hang around with, okay? If we can sit there and create an America that educates, just like Barack did to that heckler, and not look down on people just because of their skin color, or automatically go for our wallet and put it in our front pocket instead of our back because there's someone of a different skin tone walking behind us or next to us. To know that not everybody's out to get us, we'll have less of these issues. And it was it was it was interesting 
And when I explained it to her, because I says, you know, stuff that the vice president's doing in Indiana, where I loot, if it's against your religion, you don't have to serve me or employ me. Now, granted, uh, did he deny that it, he denied that it was directly associated with homosexuals or people that are gay? Uh, but in reality, it, it, it strips me all of my all of my freedoms and my rights. That I, you're bringing, you're bringing us back to a time that of segregation. You know, it's or or one of my coworkers. Um, she actually just left. Uh, she just graduated with her bachelor's. She's an amazing woman, Rihanna. I love her. Um, she looks Muslim. No doubt about it. Uh, she has a, a slightly darker skin complexion. Um, and just looking at her very quickly, if you have that picture or image of what a Muslim looks like, granted she doesn't wear burkas or any garments, y you would assume she had some kind of, you know, background in the Middle East. However, she's Caribbean. Now, I says, well, now imagine her. Yeah, if they're, you're, you're picking apart and throwing out every single Muslim in the country. And she gets racial profiled because of her look. Do you know how embarrassing that is? Or how you feel less of a person when you were actually born here? You have legal citizenship. You love this country. You don't even speak anything other than English. You are Catholic or Christian or whatever the religion may be and you get picked just because of your skin color. Now you're, she was a white female, blonde hair, and it says none of my issues, none of her issues are at your doorstep. So does it really bother you because you don't have to deal with it? She kind of looked at me. Our, 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 guess tit for tat or debate kind of ended there but it wasn't the point of of winning I won I, I got my point across it was a point of educating and I think if we have more instances of instead of, of lashing out with hatred and violence and, and educate and, and realize that sometimes the harder path even though it's 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 going to take longer and it's going to be harder to get there uh, is the right path we'll have a better America. Now, I, I've never voted in 29 years of my life, ever. Never voted for one president. It's not to say that I didn't like any of them, it's just, I never thought that, I, I have more than enough people in you know New York that are voting, and they, what's my vote going to do? I'm actually nervous about this uh, election. That I'm gonna be, this is the first year that I'm actually gonna vote. And I hope my one vote makes a difference. And I hope that anybody else that hasn't voted this year, or ever, oh, this year, but ever, <laughs> um, votes. And I hope, I hope their voice gets heard because some of these issues might come to your doorsteps without you even knowing. And I wouldn't want to see that happen. You know, so those are my two cents. Uh, I, don't, I doubt, I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make, but it might make sense.